<laughs> ah, Tavel, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? Dude, I am doing really well. I I have I'm gonna be real honest. It's been a day, but uh knowing that I not only get to hang out with you, but that I get to bake with you today, uh, has like is has been like what has fueled me, to be quite honest. Because as I was thinking through years ago when we met each other, we always get to hang out when I'm in Austin in in your home. Right. But I've never actually gotten to bake with you before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's super dope. Well, I mean, I'm hoping that this cookie that we're about to make is going to turn your day around and make Dude. it a fantastic day. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm also happy to be baked. I mean, we talk about this. I've been trying, uh, wanting to bake with you for the longest. I think that you're just amazing. So I'm excited. This is fun. Dude, okay, first of all, this is all about you, so don't you dare try and turn it around on me. <laughs> Dr. C, you've been missing out. <laughs> Crystal Joseph, he is an incredible friend. He's an amazingly talented pastry chef. Uh, he's based in Austin, Texas. He's the chef and owner of, uh, okay, not one, not two, not three, not four, five incredible restaurants. Um, he has won um so many awards that would prove to i mean i know you don't do it for the awards i don't know anyone that's really worth winning awards that does it for the awards but you have broken down so many different firsts in our industry which i think is so incredible you were the first pastry chef to win a food and wine best new chef award which just like brought me to tears with like pride and celebration for you, just sort of like cheering you on, doing it for yourself and for all the reasons that you do it, but doing yeah. it for pastry chefs and for the love of dessert more than anything else. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it, uh, it's just amazing, man. It feels good to uh, one represent and, and, and be able to uh, make changes in this food industry, right? Uh, we work hard every day and we put our hearts and soul into what we do. And I'm just like super excited to show my team uh, of pastry chef that I work with and also in our community that you know, hard work pays off, right? Um, you continue, you stay grounded, you push through um, and, and, and live to see another day. And you will be <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's kind that's kind of like kitchen mentality, right? It's like you that, do it for the love of the game every single day. You yeah. don't really know what tomorrow's going to bring. So you you live for the day and you do it going to bed then and hoping that the next day when you wake up you're like I'm, I'm I I I think I did enough to make it to the next. <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's it. I it I out. love it. <laughs> Um, okay, so one, thank you for joining us on Bake Club. Our like home bakers, professional bakers, I think they're gonna freak out about not just baking with you, getting to hear, I don't know, like more about you, your story, what, what makes you tick all through the lens of yeah. baking a recipe with you. And by the way, Bake Club, let me just break it down for you. This wow. incredible man, this incredible mastermind of dessert, crushes everything, is known from everything from like the most delectable Parker House rolls that are just like cloud-like and incredibly milky and fluffy and delicious to the most intricately and deeply emotional and visually beautiful plated dessert rendition of like a s'mores from your childhood seen through his lens as a professional pastry chef to like a deep, rich, creamy Basque cheesecake. I mean, you bake all over the map. You're from, you're from Guyana, um, but you you bake all over the map, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, so it's funny because um, it's, you know, inspiration comes, right, from every angle. And I think that if you don't put yourself in a box or have that mentality of this is what I'm going to be great at, and you just kind of open up your heart, open up your creative, uh, your creative mind, um, yes. you can go anywhere. And there's one thing that I think is very important. 
for me, it's like, if, the, if I'm going to do anything, I want to be the best at it, right? So if I'm making a simple cookie, I want to be the best cookie you've ever had. If I'm making you a brownie, I want it to be the best brownie. And if I want to go crazy and come up with something geeky and fun, it's going to be the best that I can do, personally can do. So uh, it's, it's not natural to bounce all over because it's like, whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the best. And you tell me if it's great or not. And if you say it's not, we'll make it again. <laughs> <laughs> where do you, where does that part of like, wanting to be the best version of yourself like where does that come from in you good when question. did it develop yeah good question so um i think it came from because i grew up in georgetown guyana and um you know was trying to figure out where i wanted to be when i grew up i i wasn't a kid that knew what i wanted right away um, so, uh, when I used to bake with my aunt, she used to bake, I used to bake for punishment because I played basketball all the time. And every time I would be like out playing ball, um, she would like try to get me to come home early and I would want to stay out late. So her punishment was, you're going to bake with me every Saturday, uh, for the kids in Sunday school. So I was like, and you know, as a young man, you were like, I want to be outside. I want to do this. Yeah, uh, I'm not trying to bake with you. <laughs> no, no. Um, and then it just kind of like, uh, from that being a punishment, it kind of turned into like this really fun thing to do with my aunt every Saturday. So I was like, I think this is what I want to do. And my uncle, um, he always used to tell me like, I don't care what you do, just be the best that you can be at it. I don't look at no one else, don't look at what anyone else is doing. Just focus on you and say, am I doing my best? And if you don't have an answer for that, that's that it, that you are doing your best, that you need to try harder. So I've had that instilled in me from, I would say around the age of like 16, 17. And it's just stuck with me. And, and that's the thing, like we all, I think, and the other thing is uh, my mom always tell me like, I'm enough, you know what I mean? So. If I know that I'm doing my best, that's enough. I don't need to try to compare to anyone. And it just gives you a different perspective on life. You just live life yeah. a little bit more free. Yeah. <laughs> you don't measure yourself by anyone else other than like how you feel about you right here. Exactly. Because that's what truly matters. Okay, uh, first of all, how did they how did they get these lessons into your thick head as a teenage boy trying to <laughs> trying to hit the b-ball court? I know, I know. Well, uh, playing basketball, you you learn teamwork. You learn uh, what you're great at. You learn mm. how to pass. You learn how to be humble because you don't always yeah. win. So, like those, all of those things are a part of sports, and it shows you and molds you into being a better person. Got it. Yeah. yeah. God. You're incredible. Okay. All right. I'm going to get in trouble if I don't start baking soon right. uh, or not. I'm not going to get in trouble, but I have been um, talking to you and grabbing ingredients, awesome. trying to keep it on the hush hush because <laughs> Tavel, it's time to let Bake Club know what are we making today? Cool. Cool. So, all right. Today we're making monster cookies, right? And these are my absolute favorite cookies to make. Um, because they're like chunky, they're rich, they're gooey on the inside, a lot of chocolate, a lot of Texas pecans, and it's just fantastic, good flavor. And to me, if I'm gonna eat a cookie, I like to put that bass in my voice and say, I'm eating a cookie. A cookie, let's <laughs> get that cookie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so love so it. monster cookies. Oh my God, okay. Let's start only because I know we have to do some mixing and you know I'm gonna have 101 questions for you about right, right. baking and about life because we're not, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done here. <laughs> okay, so break it down for me. We're gonna make monster cookies the way a professional pastry chef make monster cookies right. uh, by grams, right? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, I got my recipes laid out in grams. Um, and, uh, and I know like a lot of times home cooks, you may not uh, be scaling out recipes and grams. Um, there is a conversion that you can use and we can, you can just easily find that on Google or something. 
Perfect. Uh, we'll, we, we'll convert it for you, Bay Club. We'll make sure if you don't have a scale at home, NBD, we got you on the conversion front. Huh? Uh, there will be no boundary to keep you from Tavelle's <laughs> incredible monster cookies that we're about to get into. But I'm going with you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out the scale that I never pull out at home because right. this is, this is, these are the things I do for you because you're so incredibly inspired. Yeah. Okay, monster cookies. One, how did you come up with this recipe? So it's crazy. So I made, uh, I was doing an event in New York. And uh, a friend of mine brought these cookies from uh, Bakley Levain, I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, so they're those really, really big, hearty, yeah. kind of cookies. Right. And so at first, I'm like, really a cookie? Like, you're not impressing me with a cookie, all right? I've had a lot of cookies in my life. Hey, watch, your, watch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah listen, so, then I'll, so then she was like, no, no, you've never had this cookie. I was like, OK. So I tried it and I was like, oh my God, I need to make a cookie that makes me feel the way that this cookie just made me feel. So I got back, came back and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try. I had like maybe a five or six cookie recipes that I already had. So I'm making them, I'm baking them, trying to get it. It just was not coming out the way that I wanted to come out where I had this impression of this big chunky cookie. And then, so I'm in my bed one night and I'm like, Maybe I'm approaching this differently. Maybe I got to make this cookie more like uh, making a cake where you're creaming the butter a little bit more um, so you can get that soft, mm. gooey center because that's mm. kind of like that balance when you cream, uh, depending on how much you cream your sugar and butter is where you're going to create as much air. So yeah. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. So I did it again and where I creamed my butter uh, and sugar a little bit longer than I would the regular cookie um, recipe. And I also, um, I also baked it shorter time and a higher temperature. And it turned around. I mean, I'm making it just probably after like the 15th time that it came out. And then I was like, this is it. Uh, and we started, we opened up a restaurant called Henbit, which was like this fast casual grab and go concept and put it out there and it took off. We couldn't make enough of this cookie. And oh then I called and say, hey, we want to put it in the store. And I was like, okay, and took off from there. Now we're making it with you. I <laughs> love it. So if we are super duper lazy and we're anywhere near Austin, Texas, we can go to Henbit to get our hands on the monster cookies. Um, but we can get a little, little taste of what's, of what's here and what's here yeah. for you all across Austin, which I love. Emma and Rye is, is one of my favorites. Okay, I was going to mix my monster cookie with you it with with by hand, but okay. hearing your hearing your sort of like butter sugar creaming as being such an essential part, and yeah. seeing what you're leaning on. Are you ready for this? Don't freak out. Hold on. Oh my God. Do I know how to do this? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Watch. Boom! Wow. We're not, we got twinsies. <laughs> we got twinsies. So I'm going to mix things with you. You know what? I'm with you all the way. That's awesome. Okay, we got, we're twinning right now. I think that this is just a sign for me. Right. This is, okay. This is great. All Break right. it so, down for me. I'm ready to go. Good. So I'll tell you what we got. So we got one pound of butter. Okay. Right? I got, what kind of butter do you like to use? I got blue grow butter because it's the higher fat content. Um, that's yep. my favorite. Um, yep. And then, uh, and then I'm going into sugar, regular sugar. So I got uh, 224 grams. Of sugar. Got it. Right. How many, how many cookies does this recipe make? Uh, this recipe is going to make about 17 to 18 cookies, depending on how much you're eating, how many cookie dough you're eating before you get to that. <laughs> so this is going to make about 10 cookies for me as well. Here. <laughs> Once, I, once they finally make it to the oven. <laughs> right. All right. So I'm okay. going to put my butter into my bowl, as you are. And then, okay, I'm with you. So butter and regular sugar going first. Butter and all sugar going first. So we got regular sugar, which is 224 grams. And then we have brown sugar, which is 252 grams. Got it. Oak type of sugar because brown sugar has that molasses, right? And yeah. Wanna, for me, I want to put like as much 
flavor into this cookie as I can. Um, the sugar is just going to continue to make it sweet. But I put some brown sugar oh, in really? it and it adds that molasses flavor that puts a lot, a really good backbone to that cookie. I love the way that you describe that. I'm very excited. So this is basically like equal parts. It's a little bit more like brown sugar than it is granulated sugar, which is pretty exciting in terms of, to your point, what kind of flavor we're going to get out of it. Absolutely. Okay, so butter and sugars in the bowl. We're in using bowl. a high... Sugra butter is like the pastry chef butter of choice often, oftentimes. It's unsalted. It's European style. It's all the flavor. It's all the fat. Yeah. Good butter in. Killer monster cookie out. There we go. I like that. Boom. <laughs> killer cookies. <laughs> <laughs> they're, oh, yeah. They're monsters. Duh. Okay. We got it. <laughs> all right. So we'll start. we we'll let that go. Okay. And I'm going to put this on like medium medium to high heat. Speed. Got it. Watch this. And this is going to go for about, I would say like you want it to go for like a good minute, minute and a half. Got it. And that butter and that thing to fully cream. Got it. And when, how often and when do you scrape down the sides of your mixer? All right, I, I like to scrape down the sides when the butter and sugar creams up a little bit um, where the butter is kind of to the sides of the bowl because it, it, it kind of mixes it and it kind of gets to this place where it creams up on the side. Got it. Right. So now I got, uh, now that my butter is creamed, so I just, I'm looking at my butter, it, it got all pale, beautiful. It got all yeah. pale. So that's where we want it to be. Now it's time for me to add four eggs. Okay, got it. That's a that is a what I would call a cuss ton of eggs. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and that's just to create to to your point, like the hardiness of this cookie. Right, right, right. And you're gonna and because this cookie is about getting that gooey center, right? So you the amount of eggs that's in there helps you to build that protein structure that we want so that it stays up. And then when you break it, then you get all that wonderful gooiness on the center. Got it. Okay. I realized my 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 creaming, I, I shortchanged my creaming and I, I did not want to disappoint you. I can't fail you on your monster cookies. Okay, so right. four right. eggs. And do you add them all at once or do you go one at a time? Go all at one time. Nice. Right. Very nice. So four eggs. Um, and I'm going to put this again on that medium speed um, because all I want is to get my eggs fully incorporated with uh, uh, with the butter so I don't I don't need it to do anything because we got some more mixing to do so as long as I incorporate with the butter I'm done got it okay hold on mine's almost there I'm gonna I'm gonna script I just do I was, I was, um, the other day I was joking with someone, I can't remember who it was, I was like, you know, at Bay Club, I like, you know, I mix it by hand, I never talk about scraping down the sides of the mixer, uh, yeah. because I feel like whenever I'm writing a real recipe, writing a recipe for a cookbook, it's always like, do this, scrape down the sides of the mixer, do that, scrape down the sides of the mixer, because we're trained as professional pastry chefs to be so obsessed with like consistency and the homogenous mixture so yeah. that every single thing we're mixing turns out exactly the same. Absolutely. I, it, I look at it like this. So like, it's funny that you say that because when I'm creating, I'm like you, I'm creating in a bowl. I'm not using a mixer and I'm grabbing cups, spoon, scale, anything, because when you're in that space, you want to not lose that that you got, right? Oh, yes. That, that you're looking for. And then yeah. after that, I got to go back <laughs> and make it again, and then use all the equipment to get it to where it needs to be. 
I love that. I describe that me like when it happens, it's like, right. It's like your freight train, your imagination, your emotion. Yeah. You don't want to let anything stand in its way. And then if you make magic, you're like, wait, what the heck just happened? I have to figure <laughs> out what the heck I just did right, to get right. there. But I love that about you, and you can taste it in your desserts. Like, you yeah. can taste that there is so much emotion and so much joy in, and so much, like, care about how that emotion translates. It doesn't just taste good. When you eat your desserts, they make you feel something. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I, most people don't know how to do that. And I think that that is such a powerful part of the work that you do that you can't see looking at one of your beautiful desserts in a magazine or online or on Instagram, nothing beats going to actually be fed by you. Yeah, um, yeah. But these monster cookies, they're going to be okay. They're going to, they're going to do all right in quarantine. I think they're going to be everyone's second best bet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's that emotional. I like how you speak about that because I think that for me, cooking has always been this emotional thing because I remember coming from South America, I've never had like an apple before until I was probably 18 years old. Mm. But this is when I had strawberries and I was introduced to these different fruits. I grew up eating mm. mangoes and coconuts. So even bananas were different, right? So after I came here and I was like making stuff, it was all on like, I imagine how this is gonna uh, taste and then I'm gonna create from that imagination. And then, it, and then after I tried it, it was like, okay, how would something make me, because I am an emotional uh, creator. So I want to create something that is emotionally driven, um, mm -hmm. that made me feel a certain way. And I want to give you that gift of making you feel the way I felt, whether it's the way something looked or felt or temperature or whatever it is. So that's my, always been my angle. So everything I make from the cookies to you see it and you go, wow, that's a big cookie. That's what I want. That emotional reaction before anything else. Totally. You feel like you're like a kid <laughs> being given a dessert that's much larger than anything that's ever, than anyone's ever told you is an acceptable <laughs> size cookie to eat. It's not this big. It's this big. And you exactly. just, yeah, your eyes feel like they're popping out of their head. Yeah. Six ounces of goodness. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay, so we have our butter and our sugars creamed. We just added our four eggs and we mixed them just until they came together. We already did that aeration. Perfect. Good. Tell me now, what's next. Now we're going to uh, combine all of our dry ingredients into one bowl. Then we're going to transport that into the mixer. Okay, I'm ready. So I'm going to combine my salt. I'm gonna salt. Combine my uh, flour, my AP flour, and then I'm going to combine my uh, whole wheat flour. Now, I remember I said everything I do, I want to create as much flavor as possible. So yes. instead of having a whole bunch of AP flour, I added some whole wheat flour in there, gives it a little bit of a bite from that bran. It gives it mm. a little those earth tones, those earthy flavors that you want. Um, and it's just going to make this cookie now a little bit more rounded, right? So, yeah. I, so I took out some of the AP that I originally had it with, and then I added this um, brand to get it um, where I want it to be. Also, That's really add, cool. So I yeah, also noticed that you call, you say you can use whole wheat, whole wheat or you can use Sonora flour. Right. So Sonora flour is um, basically it's a it's a fresh milled grain, right? Um, it was it's the closest grain that you can mill that has a high protein content. Because like for example, AP flour has about uh, thirteen percent protein, um, and Sonora has about twelve point five. But wow. the main difference between those two is that Sonora has better flavor. It has more acids and better mm. digestion. So I want it. So when I make it in the restaurant, I'm using Sonora flour because we have a mill. We mill our own grains at Emmer. At um, Emmer and Rye. If you're at, yeah, but if you're at home, it's better to just get some good 
uh, whole wheat flour, and that gives you kind of like that same emotional feeling of eating something that's good for you and also adding flavor to that cookie all at the same time. Got it. I mean, I like the way you put it. I've never tried Sonora flour before, so now I'm like very curious. Yeah. And I also like the way you put it. I think oftentimes, at least normally at Bake Club, we talk about like, I mean, we've been baking in quarantine, so we talk about like whatever flour you have is going to do yeah. because it's the flour you have. And so we're just going to figure it out. But I like the idea that you have of like taking it another step further. Flour can add flavor and depth of flavor, or to your point, a heartier protein content is going to make it easier for you to digest. Because I don't know about you, but I plan on eating several cookies for dinner. <laughs> um, or just that idea of like your dry ingredients don't just have to act as binder. Right. They, they can and should be something you're thinking about in terms of like the flavor story and the overall eatability of yeah. whatever it is you're making. Yeah. 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 It's, about, like it's about cooking with purpose, right? And Cooking everything that you that you doing um, needs to be needs to know why you're doing it um, because I live by that code. I don't do anything. It changed my life a lot. Maybe about ten or fifteen years ago, I started asking myself why I'm doing certain things. Uh, hmm. I read this um, uh, book by uh, this guy Simon Sillack. Um, he did like a TED talk and. He was talking about the why factor, and it was. Oh like, my God, Tavell! He's like a good friend of mine. Really? Oh my God, <laughs> I'm sending him. I'm sending him to you. I'm sending him to you. All right, change my life because the why. Find your why. Yes, because it was like I've never asked myself that question before. I was always like doing things because of, it's just what it needed to be done, right? And. And after I started asking myself why, like, so before that, didn't own a restaurant, nothing. After I started to be more purposeful with what I'm doing, the way I'm cooking, what I'm putting in, into my food, uh, my relationships with people, my relationships with professionals, everything, I started to question. And then I had a meeting with all of our heads and I said, hey, from this point on, we're going to be asking ourselves these questions why should we open a restaurant why should people come and why should anyone care that we got a restaurant and if we don't have those answers we're not doing it <laughs> and it i am everything. can i come work for you <laughs> uh, it's so true why do we not stop to ask ourselves that very simple question is it because we're scared or because we've never really thought about it we're just taught to kind of live and make it through life and do the best we can yeah, yeah, both. Without, without the why, why it is we're doing it, what makes us tick? Yes, yes. I think it's so important, so important in the way that we live and how we do it, and especially in this industry to um, look at where, you know, the margins are really thin with what's going on right now in our community. Like, asking yourself why you're doing what you're doing before COVID keeps you to go through this process in a more healthier state of mind because you know there's a bigger purpose. You know that you love what you do every day. So we're gonna continue to push through and know that things are gonna be okay. It's a hard time now, but we gonna get through this. We just gotta keep saying why we're we doing what we're doing and yeah. finding that answer and letting people believe in it. I mean, that is, uh, I feel like I'm getting whatever the equivalent of like friend therapy and friend life coaching and, and all of the things. And we haven't even added our freaking gorgeous Sonora flour or whole wheat flour or mixture. Come on. Um, uh, I'm like, oh, are we really making cookies? I just want to hear you talk about life more. Um, okay, no, you know, we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to ourselves yeah. to, to keep making cookies, but we're not yeah. leaving it there. Okay, so I have my flowers, my, my whole wheat flour, my AP flour. I have my salt. There's baking soda as well. Yeah, so we're going to do 11 grams of baking soda too. Okay, got it. All right, so... Um, and then we're gonna mix it all up in a bowl and then add that to our butter mixture. Got it. And then I have one other question. Are, what's the story with lemon zest? All right, so the story with lemon zest is I didn't, I didn't wanna use vanilla extract, right? 
um, because I, I was like, I want to make this cookie as healthy as I can. I don't want to add any alcohol to it. Got so it. what do I use? Now, there's two, I had two options. The first option is, I don't know, so if you, so parsnips have this thing called vanillin in it, right? Which yeah. is just like vanilla when you dehydrate it. So if you don't want to use vanilla extract, you can actually dehydrate parsnips, make a powder from it, and then it has that same effect. So I had that option, which, and I didn't add any parsnips at the time. And so I was like, cool, I'm going to use lemon zest because not only does lemon zest balance out where it takes away that eggy flavor, but it also adds more flavor and lemon and chocolate goes so well together. So why not do that? And that's how lemon zest, that's my secret weapon. Holy smokes. Okay. So the lemons that should be in with the mixture before we add the dry ingredients. So I normally put my lemon in now. Okay. Okay, yeah. got it. So because um, I don't want it to release all those oils before I get it, before this cookie bakes, because I want to, if I put the lemon in before, it's going to release those oils in the fat, and then the whole thing tastes lemony. But if I put I it in now, uh, it doesn't release those oils. When it bakes, I'm going to have these little pockets of lemon that you're going to bite and get it. And that's what I'm looking for. That's brilliant. So the lemon is not there. We're adding the lemon when we do so that it's not, this cookie is not about lemon. The lemon is just there to your point to balance the eggs, which are giving us lift and richness and fudginess. We just don't want it to taste eggy. And so the lemon is just to sort of, cut the flavor of egg yes. down. It's not about the lemon. The lemon is like the behind the scenes, the behind the scenes person just helping us do the work. Also, yeah. Bake Club, can we just for a moment, this incredible human was about to harvest vanillin from parsnips <laughs> in order to put it in the cookie. That is like, that is the level of commitment we are talking about with this brilliant <laughs> genius of a pastry chef. Okay. I'm done. My jaw was almost on the ground when you were there. I was like, holy sh. No, <laughs> Okay, so fries are in. That's what we do now, right? We try to use as much local, seasonal, uh, our farms, our ranchers, use all the things that nature gives us as much as we can. And if we can't, then we substitute and make it happen. Got it. Oh. So my flour is in, and then we're going to put this again. We're going to start at a low speed. Okay. Then we're going to build it up until it fully incorporates. Got it. All right. And that, that's the thing that coming together nicely. Turn it my medium. And now, I don't know what you got. There you go. So it's coming together. Now we're about to get cookie dough now. Okay. All right. So I'm going to let this, yeah, I like your scraping down the edges um, because what we're going to do is this process, this, at this point, we're going, um, we, we just want the flour to mix in with the butter uh, and you don't want to over mix it because this is a really crucial point here. If you over mix yeah. this, you're creating a lot of gluten and you don't want your cookie to taste doughy. Mm -mm. So you just want it to come together and as soon as it comes together, we stop. Love that. Love you for saying that. I feel like a crazy um, like grandma every time we add flour to something that's not like bread. Yeah. I'm like, you better, you better mix it as little as humanly possible. Yeah. Um, I, I, secret yeah. to Monster Cookie 2, Bake Club. I think your team do a good job, too, because honestly, I've had, just so you know, I'm a huge fan, and I've probably had every single one of your cookies that you have made. I've even texted you when I was, like, at your yeah. store. <laughs> yeah, in New York. You're like, hey, what's up, girl? I'm in New York. I'm eating cookies. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> for sure so i have had them all and i've took them all to the family and the kids and all that so but i love that about your cookie too where 
you, you bite it, it, it breaks. You can actually, it melts in your mouth as you're chewing it. Like, I, uh, I think you do a fantastic job. Oh, you're the best, thank you. Okay, so we have all of our dry ingredients in, our salt, our baking soda, and we know it's like monster time. Yes, so now we're gonna add both our chocolate and our pecans in. And these are raw pecans, they're not toasted. Ooh, got and it, that's a good note. Got some really good chocolate chips. And chocolate chips, and what's your prep? Do you like dark, do you like semi-sweet, milk? Um, I, uh, these are semi-sweet, uh, dark. Um, Got it. so I, uh, this is like a 62%. Now this is also a professional chocolate, right? Um, it's not like the Hershey's or anything like that. And I'll tell you what's the main difference in this, right? So, uh, these chocolate chips are going to give you that true chocolate, that bitterness, um, mm -hmm. and wherever it's from, it's gonna give you those notes. Versus like Hershey's or one of those chocolates, it's a lot more cocoa butter. So you don't yes. get a lot of chocolate flavor. And That's I am about, point. again, a lot of flavor. So I, I wanna make sure that I get good chocolate when I'm making chocolate chip cookies. Got it. And you are like, you're a Texan. I mean, do you call yourself a Texan? I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I haven't made a converse yet. I haven't made a, okay. I haven't converted yet. I, I, I still say, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn, but. <laughs> I mean, Brooklyn, I get it. Brooklyn is like, I'm not from Brooklyn, but I lived there for like 15 years. And even no matter where I go, and people are like, oh, where are you from? I'll be like, oh, I'm from Ohio, I'm from Virginia, but also like, Brooklyn. No, I look, I look like it's a it's a Babs, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but pecans in a cook, well, pecans in, in dessert recipes. If you could choose any, not choosing pecan is like, wait a second, you're you're from somewhere down in the south that says like, you know, you don't call them pecans, you call them pecans. Yeah. So can you <laughs> can you use is this recipe like interchangeable for any nut? If you I have I yes. you know I yes. don't have it is, it is absolutely interchangeable. Um, as okay. long as you get like uh, chunky um, nuts. And one of the reasons why I use uh, pecans um, is because it has this hot, one is Texas pecan, and I think Texas pecan is amazing. Uh, yeah. And then the other reason, it has such a high fat content that it doesn't take a long time to cook, um, mm. which is I what see. is really important for this cookie. Because like for, like let's say almond, Almond takes a longer time to cook if it's not toasted inside of a cookie dough. Um, and this cookie only bakes for six minutes. So got you want to make sure that you have a, a nut in there, like a cashew, something of that nature that it's like it can just heat up, get the oils out, and it's ready to go. It got it. So something much. that's like a softer nut that's higher in fat. I yeah. mean, you're using your Texas pecans because they're fresh and local, which kind of goes back to your philosophy of where you're getting your ingredients. Your why, like all of your whys, right? Like every choice of ingredient is an opportunity to ask yourself that. Absolutely. And for you, these monster cookies are about like hearty, chunky, big moments. So something like a little dinky pistachio, you could totally do it, but you're going to get a different, it's a different monster. Totally different <laughs> monster. Yeah, that, that's a monster off of Sesame Street. Where yeah, I got, <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right, so it's all, all right. going in. All in, and then we're going to just mix it until it comes together. Nice okay. and slow. All there we go, all right. coming together, all right. Perfect. Perfect. Great. So, um, I'm going to be real honest. I yeah. ate some dough a second ago while you weren't looking, and it was awesome. <laughs> like this, this moment, like hearing you talk through the why of the lemon zest, not just why there's lemon zest, but why you add it when you add it, right? When yeah. you're done creaming, when you're done with that really aggressive paddling, but right before the flour so that it was like it was there and not there at all in a really right. beautiful way. And I had such a greater appreciation for that mixture of flour and wheat flour 
Yeah. Uh, and seeing how many insane chunks of pecans <laughs> and dark chocolate chips is like, it's going to be a good night in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Um, so, yeah, so now, like, my cookie, I always try to do my taste test. Um, sure that everything. Man after my own heart. You got to taste it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's so good. How do you teach? Um, how do you teach your team to to taste? Like beyond just the act of tasting, mm -hmm. how do you teach that assessment? Good question. So because that is so important for us, right? Um, for me as a chef, there's there's going to be tricks and recipes and style of doing things that's going to come in and out of our lives forever. Right? There's always going to be a new way to do something. But learning how to taste will stay with you forever. And as a chef, that is probably your most important trait. Because it doesn't matter what you create, if you don't know what and how something should taste, you're lost. So mm. letting a chef know what to taste and, and how to taste things where you put it in the first, in the beginning of your mouth, you 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 let it move around a little bit. You stop and, and give it like a 30 seconds before you respond. You check for salt, acid, fat. You think about how all of those things interact. And then the, the most important thing is understanding what you want and then mm. thinking, is there anything stopping you when that flavor is in your mouth to get into where you want to be? So mm. like, I'm tasting this cookie dough. I'm like, okay, is the chocolate too fatty before mm. I go to taste the lemon zest because the fat is cold in my tongue and I can't get to the lemon zest? Then I need mm. to think about what kind of chocolate I'm using. And then if it comes together really nice where the chocolate melts, like all of those things I'm thinking when I'm creating and tasting these uh, mm. the recipes. So that's how I normally do with that. And then with sorbets and ice creams, no recipe at all. I'm like, mm. if you are making strawberry sorbet, think about the best strawberry you've ever had in your life. Make that puree and then let's get there. How we get there, I'm not going to stop you. But I want to taste the best strawberry you've ever had. <laughs> I love that. Because every strawberry is different, right? Like the sugar oh, density, okay. the acid, to your point. So it's there's no point in creating an actual, actual recipe for strawberry sorbet. Right. I mean, maybe there's guardrails of like, if we're going to sweeten it, we're going to do it this way, or what, what have you. But, oh, man, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to quit my job and come and work for you. <laughs> it's official. Just, how about that? <laughs> it's official. Um, I love the way that you put that. I mean, it kind of it really goes back to like, there's so many different levels to your why. Yeah. There's so many different levels to it of, of, of when you go to taste it, you, mm -hmm. you almost have to understand your why of every single step of the ingredient because yeah. your tasting of it sort of goes back to say, um, did the salt do what it was supposed to do? Did the, the, the baking soda do what it was supposed to do? To your point, did the chocolate chips, did the nuts, did both of the right. flours, is that the right balance? Is there too much fat? Uh, are the sugars playing well? Is there the depth? Is the lemon there, but not there? You know, like it really forces you as your own little checklist, yes, uh, yes, which yeah. I love. It makes you become that much more um, like deeply intertwined with the recipe that you're making rather than just sort of like reading, measuring, dumping, reading, measuring, dumping sort of thing. Yeah. And that, and, and honestly, that is a trade that anyone, people at home, any one of us can do. It doesn't take a professional. You just want to taste everything that you make and, and not solely depend on what someone else's opinion of perfect is, right? You can make your own determination of that because you have your own taste buds that you trust. So for me, it's like recipes are guidelines, but it's not end all be all. I can still play and have, I changed my own recipe numerous times. But I tried it after a month and I'm like, I'm not in that mood anymore. I kind of want something different. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, one, hear, hear that. And then two, I think what also sort of strikes me in hearing you talk about it is, you are a soulful pastry chef. And I think a lot of people misunderstand pastry chefs as 
you know, we're, we're scientists on many levels because a lot of baking is dependent upon ratios of, yeah. you know, hydration, um, chemical leaveners, um, gluten development, percentages of protein and flour and so on. And those things are true, but it is not, it, it is, if you are a pastry chef that only has technique to stand upon, yeah. I, I just don't, I believe that there is something that has to be in you that is so much deeper because if your soul does not come out when you're baking, like you're dealing with, in my opinion, the most emotional kind of food that exists. And if you don't, if you don't bring that emotion to every single recipe, then it's kind of for not, you could yeah. fake it. But to your point, if you don't know what perfect is not technique, but in, in, in how it makes you feel, Yes. Then what's it all for? It's not going to make anyone else feel anything, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And okay, I'm talk like to, that too. I talk to me about more. this dough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so here, so now we got our dough. I'm going to bring it closer to the screen. I'm going to get a big Okay, good. Yeah, I want to get eyes on that. Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Uh, that looks beautiful amazing. looking cookie dough. Yes. <laughs> please, please put that in the mail immediately. Yeah, Something the, tells me yours is leaps and bounds above mine. Yeah. And then I'm going to now do, I'm going to scoop. So each cookie is like six ounces, right? So I've made these cookies enough where I know one big spoonful gives me six ounces. And I want this cookie dough to be like high. I want it to be rustic looking. Uh, because yeah. we want to make sure that that, that 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 center stays nice and gooey, right? A little bit on the raw side. So this is how high my cookie is. Nice. I mean, that thing is gigantic, <laughs> and I am here for it. <laughs> okay, right? I need a bigger spoon. I need a bigger spoon. It's y'all don't even don't even mess with a soup spoon. That's not big enough. You need like the biggest yeah. spoon. There you go. Like, <laughs> like can 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 hide your mouth as you go. Okay. Oh my God. All right. So we're going on to. Is your baking sheet greased? Yeah. So uh, what I did, I just sprayed the bottom of the sheet so it sticks to the pan. And then um, nothing on top. Got it. Right. And I'm building them high. Building them high. Um, and you want it to be as uh, you can think about. You want it to ha look like. You just scooped it out and put it on the tray. You don't want it smooth. You don't want it to look like a, like a snowball. Be high and rustic looking. Got it. And Mama, these are going to be, here. these are also like, this is like what you take when you're like, oh, I'm going to go on, I'm going to go do something and I'm not going to be back for eight hours. This is your like meal. I mean, this is basically the size of a baseball no yeah right. yeah just the, it, it, it's just a touch smaller but yes absolutely dude this is unapologetically amazing yeah it, uh, it's not based in your voice right it's a cookie it's a cookie <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is to melt this i'm having the best time with you i just yeah, this, is, this is great i i love it's a cookie it's a cookie <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So we're scooping these. Yeah. So I'm going to put I got a half sheet tray here. Um, okay. And I'm going to get about nine on them. Got it. Do they spread a lot? No. So this is the other thing, right? When we bake them, so uh, we didn't say this. So we're baking these at 400 degrees, right? Which is got it. high for a cookie. Um, uh, so what that does is because of the high temperature, you're getting crystallization on the outside of this cookie really fast. Yes. So it doesn't have time to spread. Right? I see. If you make this cookie and it's spread a lot, that means your temperature of your oven is not high enough. Um, so it's taking a longer time. Now, I with my home oven I have, um, I checked this oven like maybe uh, I checked it last week. So 400 on my oven is actually 450, right? Got it. Um, Got it. So that's the other thing that you do want to check when you're baking at home is check the collaborate, um, make sure that it's calibrated, um, and it's easy. You can just get like one of those oven thermometers on Amazon, put it in totally. your oven at a temperature, see what happens. 
Um, so I check mine. So my oven right now is at 450, um, but it's supposed to be at 400 in temperature. Okay, got and it. You're baking got it, it for six minutes total. Got it. And what's the story? Can we bake these immediately or do you prefer to refrigerate them? Right. So I prefer to refrigerate it a bit. And that's okay. also going to help with you with it standing up and being firm um, and it. standing high by us refrigerating it just a touch. And that's why I was going to put it in the fridge and then turn the oven on. So I by see. the time the oven is ready, your cookies are cool. Got it. Um, can I show you mine? Because I just want to say I'm confident I made them a little bit bigger, but they're oh, just yeah. like unapologetically magnificent, which is just the way that you're making me feel right now. There you go. I mean, they're gigantic. I've never made a cookie this big before. And I am so, I mean, you, look at you. You have like yeah. given me every um, permission, every moment of permission to pile this insanely delicious dough that's yeah. so like, that, that was made with so much purpose and so much, much intention to pile it higher than ever before. I yeah. love the we're going to bake these cookies. We're going to refrigerate. We're heating our oven to 400. We're going to check the internal temp. Yes. We're going to bake these cookies at 400 for six minutes so that they get this sort of like golden brown, crisp, caramelized color on the outside. But right. they're basically like cookie dough cookies in the center because <laughs> the heat doesn't actually get all the way through these gigantic scoops, right? Right. right. Uh, for sure. For sure. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to put Dude. these, get them cool, and then okay. we get them from there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So our babes refrigerated while our oven heated up. They went in four hundred six minutes. Let me get let me get eyes let me get eyes on what you got working over there out of the oven. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So cookies are right. And this is what we're looking at. Oh! <laughs> are you kidding me? They they're like beautiful, nice, golden, amazing. Okay, wait, will you break one open in the middle for me? <laughs> yeah, I gotta break one open. All right. I gotta get eyes. Mine haven't come out yet. Yeah, all right, here we go, here we go. Actually, all right, ready? Oh my God, here's the money shot. Look at that. Beautiful. Dude! Uh, you got just inside looks nice, delicious. Um, a little of chocolate is melted just a bit. Um, this is <laughs> so good, so good. Dude, what's in the oven butter? Yeah, this is yeah. This is why this is why we do it. You get that wow factor that you watch that chocolatey, gooey goodness. I wish y'all could be this in person. This would be so great. We should do like an in-person baking show or something. Dude, Dude I will better. be there. I would be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> um, I want to hang out with both the kids and make monster cookies with you and be total wow. dorks about flour and why we use it. And I just, I am... I am just so energized by you. I'm energized by your brilliance. I'm energized by the way you think about food. I'm energized by the way you show up for life. Bay Club, you better give it up for Tavel Bristol Joseph. He is incredible. Tavel, you showed up today in ways that I could not even possibly ask, imagine, or thank you for. Bay Club, you better show up for our man. He's an incredible follow on Instagram. You got to show up in Austin, Texas, across his five restaurants that he is the executive pastry chef and owns you got to shout him out all over the internet and in real life as he continues to crush the game and to make this world a better place on so many different levels one monster cookie at a time and beyond <laughs> one monster cookie at a time so i'll tell you where now you can get cookies you can get them at henbit um, in austin here you can get them at two whole foods in austin you can also get them at six Royal Blues grocery stores in Austin, or you can email us and we can ship them to you. Dude, that's Next perfect. <laughs> okay, I, BRB, gotta send, gotta send a very important email. 
<laughs> Don't worry. Oh my God, God that's God, incredible. God, you know. We're going to ship it to you and get it to you in about three to four days. Amazing. Um, it's been real, man. I'm so happy that you reached out. You're an amazing person. I admire you. I admire your energy, your love, your passion, and you paved the way for a lot of us to do what we're doing right now. I'm, I'm serious. I bought your first book and that, all of those things kind of mold me into the man I am today. So into the leader, into the way I view food, everything. So I appreciate you, um, and I'm so happy and honored to be able to do this with you. Um, whenever you come to town, you know what's up. Whenever I come to your town, you know, Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn, <laughs> <laughs> from Guyana, uh, from Guyana to the streets of Brooklyn to some stints in Arizona to yeah. Austin, Texas. You know I'm gonna show up for you every single day. I have your back yeah. always. I am so grateful to get to call you a friend from so many yeah. years ago. You pop into my life in the most magical, meaningful ways. And um, here, here's to getting it done, to finding our why, <laughs> to being emotional and yeah. joyful at what we do, and to the monster cookie. The monster cookie. <laughs> monster cookie. Thank Sending you. big hugs and kisses. Well, I'll talk to you soon. I'll shoot you a text. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye, T.